Now let's use the crystal oscillator and a transistor feedback amplifier. As you can see in the diagram, this is a Colpitts oscillator modified by replacing the inductor parallel to the C1 and C2 with a crystal oscillator Y. The crystal will now act as a parallel tuned circuit. As you can see in the circuit that instead of resonance caused by L and C1 plus C2, we have now the parallel resonance of the crystal. So at parallel resonance, the impedance of the crystal is maximum. This means that there is a maximum voltage drop across C1 or the voltage output. This in turn will allow the maximum energy transfer through the feedback network of FP. Note that the system, the circuit is a positive feedback. The 180 degree out of phase is introduced by the, the transistor itself, while the other 180 degrees is introduced by the voltage divider network of C1 and C2. So this oscillator will only oscillate at the frequency Fp. Even the uh, smallest deviation from Fp will cause the oscillator to act as an effective short. Consequently, we have an extremely stable oscillator. This circuit has some advantages and disadvantages also. First advantage is that it has a high order of frequency stability, rightfully so because we used a crystal oscillator instead of the common LC tank circuit. The second one is the quality factor of the crystal is very high and that means that the frequency is very stable. The Q factor of the crystal can is comparably as high as 10,000 compared to 100 in a common LC tank. But this circuit has some disadvantages and first it is fragile and consequently can only be used in low power circuits. That is one of the drawbacks of a crystal oscillator. As we have discussed earlier, if we apply a very large voltage into the metal plates of the crystal oscillator, we could we could break the oscillator through the through too much vibration. And that is the reason why we are limited to low power uh, circuit operations. The second disadvantage is that the frequency of oscillation cannot be changed appreciably. Since the frequency output of a crystal oscillator is a very stable, then it means that we, can, we cannot just simply change the value of the frequency of oscillation, unlike the LC circuit, then we'll just have to use variable capacitance components for uh, so that we can change the operating frequency as easily as turning the knob on the variable capacitance or changing the number of turns in an inductor. Let's have some example. The AC equivalent circuit of a crystal has these values. The L is 1 Henry. C is 0 0.01 picofarad. R is 1000 ohms. And the mounting capacitance is 20 picofarad. Let's calculate Fp and Fs of the crystal. So we'll just have to recall the formula for Fp and Fs. And let's start with Fs. This equivalent to 1 over 2 pi square root of Lc. L is given and so is C. Substituting the values, we will get our Fs of 1589 kilohertz.
Now for the FP, it is 1 over 2 pi squared of L times C sub T. C sub T is C times CM over C plus CM. Let's get the value of CT by substituting the values of C and CM. So our CT is 9.99 times 10 to the negative 15 farads, substituting that to the equation of FP. And solving, we can the value of FP is equivalent to 1590 kilohertz.